Hey guys, this is John Rivera from Solid State Gamer, host of the ROMcast as well as lead reviewer for the site, bringing you guys another interesting installment of the Quick Look series. Welcome. Uh, this time around, I'm going to be looking at a very, uh, uh, what's the proper word to use for this? I'm going to be very generous and say interesting Quick Look. Uh, I'm looking at a game called Virtuoso. And it's a title for the 3DO. It came out in 1994, and it's actually a port from an MS DOS game. And uh, both versions are made by a company called Motive Time Limited. And I'm not really familiar with this company, but I do know that this was one of their last games they ever built. And basically, this game is a third-person shooter of sorts, but the mechanics that frame the game and how you traverse the environment and how you shoot down enemies and the agency in which you do so we're pretty much using the fundamentals that were used to build first person shooters at the time so the fact that this game operates from a third person perspective is more or less a glorified smoke and mirrors act but I'll get into that later so this is the main sort of menu interesting layout so let's start with these arrows right here. Actually, let's start with the first feature, which is pressing the stop button on the 3DO controller will change from the title screen slash credits to a demonstration of the game in play. And this guy's doing a poor job so far. But thank goodness for him, he has invincibility turned on or something to that effect. Because obviously his life gauge is not going down, so I guess he's not terribly concerned about expiring. Hmm. Interesting. So these arrows right here are for selecting a certain world. So before I delve into the various worlds, uh, let me explain the conceit around virtu Virtuoso. So in Virtuoso, you're essentially a rock and roll star who is taking a break from a tour that he's doing and decides to go into virtual reality. And that's pretty much the conceit of the game. That's the story. That's all it is. Oh, by the way, the company that ported this title is Elite Systems Limited. So Elite Systems is the company responsible for porting the Mode of Time original DOS game over to the Panasonic 3DO. And here's another demonstration. So now that I've explained the story, or lack thereof, let's uh, scroll through the different worlds. There are several different levels that make up a certain world, and each world has a motif. So the first one we saw was Haunted House. Or the first one we saw was Mars. The second one is Haunted House. And the last one is Marine. So all these have different motifs depending on the title, and the enemy bestiary vary from world to world. And that's pretty much it. You just have Mars, Haunted House, and Marine. I mean, it's such a weird, disparate selection of words to describe various environments that you can actually fight in. But anyway, this is the load screen. Load failed. I don't have any saved files on here, and I don't plan to have any saved files on here. Pressing the play button engages the game. Let's go into the controls. There's actually no way to customize these controls. All this is is a static screen that shows you what each button does, and uh, with no ability to remap the button presses to certain features or controls. So, here's the option screen. I'm not going to change anything, I just want you guys to see how the menu layout is constructed. You've got music volume, sound effects, difficulty, I'm just going to keep it at medium. And that's pretty much it, so without further ado, let's jump into the Mars world of Virtuoso. Nothing very extravagant about that loading screen. And already I'm finding enemies. And I'm getting shot from something I couldn't see. Okay, so 
before I even go into the controls and how they they work in practice, I'm gonna have to dispatch these enemies before showing you guys that. I can't I can't tell how close these enemies are to me. And as you can see, everything's kind of running smooth as of right now. It's actually kind of surprising how well this game is scaling right now, but it's probably easy to see because of the fact that I can barely see, in relation to the world itself, six feet in front of my character. I mean, look at this draw distance. I mean, the last time I saw darkness this close to my character, I was playing Torok for the N64. Oh, what is this? Okay, so I just picked up a power-up probably something I should have had in the first place but the green circle that just popped up on my HUD which let's just explain that right now get that out of the way the red to blue gradient indicates my life meter the numerical value on the central part of the HUD indicates my score which in my opinion is a pointless thing in a shooting game the crucifixes below the score indicate how many lives I have and this green circle is my compass I'm just going to show you guys, since I now I have this visual aid, to show the white dot which indicates what direction I'm facing on the compass. This is how movement works. So, let me get rid of this enemy first, because... Uh, straight out of the way. So, okay, let's just get this out of the way. You can backpedal, you can walk forward, turn left or right, you can also turn and, and rotate left and right but you can't do it in reverse it won't let you do it in reverse for some reason so obviously as you guys can see this game employs what I would call character relative movement but since the controls are so unresponsive and sticky and clunky I mean I, I feel like I'm having to vigorously press down on the d-pad to get my character to do anything I'm gonna call these tank controls because they feel extremely cumbersome and needlessly so also my character can strafe right and left uh, by pressing the C button I can perform a 180 de uh, degree turn so I can turn 180 uh, that's kinda useful in firefights pressing B fires my weapon and basically when I'm firing my weapon I have to crouch down for some reason, I'm not really sure why, but since you're crouching down while shooting, you can see your enemies that you're shooting at, because like this I can't, which is probably why they made it like that, but because you're crouching, I cannot move at all. All I can do is rotate my character and basically adjust my aim. Pressing the stop button on the 3DO controller pops up this screen. I can actually still move, as you can see right here. I'm actually moving my character along the the map. That's pretty cool that you can actually move your character while you're checking out the map. It's kind of like Doom's auto map system or the dynamically refreshing map that is at the bottom of the HUD in the Genesis game that I showed you guys a few days ago. Zero tolerance for the Genesis. So that's cool. But here's what's not cool about Virtuoso. Now I'm trying to move forward right now. You notice my character is subtly moving to the left or moving to the right? Well, that's because Virtuoso, this guy, I'm assuming his name is Virtuoso, I don't really know his name because it's not even shown in the manual documentation other than him being known as our hero, which is weird. He can only move in eight directions. He can only move forward and back pedal in eight different directions. You can move in this direction. Well, here, let me get rid of this enemy to show you. You can only move in this direction, this direction, hope you guys are looking at the compass, this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, and this direction. Basically, he can only move when, f he can only move forward facing north, northeast, east, southeast, south, southwest, west, northwest. He can only move forward and backward in these eight directions. You know how in Doom and other first-person shooters, you can actually 
be facing like north northwest and actually move north northwest forward you, you can't do that in virtuoso he has to be facing only eight directions on the compass rows when moving forward and backwards and if you're not facing any of those directions he will snap to that direction I have never seen that in a game before and it makes traversing the environment extremely mind-bogglingly difficult and tedious and sometimes it gets really frustrating especially in close quartered environments so anyway let me get through this level as you can hear there's music playing in the background it's CD quality music and that's cool but in my opinion this might be a matter of taste but this kind of butt rock is not really something I prefer of course I'm getting shot at by this thing eat that ed 209 I mean doesn't that thing look like ed 209 from Robocop I mean I swear that's what it looks like it's like they just colored it yellow so here's the thing I was trying to reach that item and I couldn't because I, would, I snapped in a different direction so I picked up two things picked up an atom bomb which I'm gonna use now by pressing the A button and that's kind of like a kill everything sort of item okay so I just grabbed a key so now I can head to the end level door I'm gonna show you one last thing before I look for the exit so I'm gonna walk up against this wall so I can't do anything in this position I can't even strafe actually I don't know what the purpose of this is I'm sure that they the, the, the developers thought this was a good feature for using cover or sneaking up on opponents and stuff but there's actually no tactical advantage to this in fact to be honest it kind of leaves your character sort of crippled because when you're moving along the wall like this you can't actually move backward why not I mean you obviously can move forward I'm moving forward right now I can't rotate left I can't move back but I can move forward and I can de-snap from the wall or snap away from the wall and turn right and then vice versa happens in this direction there's there's no there's no reason for it it doesn't it, it in fact I've tried to use it in firefights and all I do is get my ass kicked and this music sucks I mean I, I I'm not trying to be rude or anything like that but this this soundtrack really is it's obnoxious if you can hear it right now just Yeah, so this soundtrack is apparently done by a rock band called Tie Die Suicide or something to that effect. I've never heard of them, and I guess that's for good reason because this soundtrack is awful. And you might be thinking that I'm being absolutely cruel by saying that, but here's the thing. When you're going through a level that has nonsensical design and you can't find the exit, and you hear this grating butt rock music playing and it's the same track that's just playing on loop incessantly indefinitely it gets old after a while and with that I'm gonna enter this next level show you what you can see or what you can expect in the second level I'm not gonna save already getting faced with enemies now look at this I can't see six feet in front of my character I'm just 
this draw distance is absolutely deplorable. Alright. Oh, gee. I couldn't, I didn't even see those enemies. They just came right behind me. In fact, I don't even think they were in this room. They just spawned randomly. That's another problem I have with this game. Oh, some more randomly appearing enemies. That's cool. I tried to use the quick turn, but here's the problem. Starting to shoot, engaging in combat, like engaging in the squat, takes like a second and a half. So you gotta fire your weapon, let go, press the quick turn button, and then fire again. You can't quick turn while you fire. I don't know why the developers did not put this convenience in the control scheme. You think that doing quick turns would be vital when you're firing your weapon, but I suppose the developers were thinking about something entirely different. I like how there's no warning. There's no... It goodness. Look, I just lost practically all my life because of that nonsense. That's ridiculous. Oh, turn around. I mean, look at that. It took me like three seconds to do the quick turn because I can't do it while I'm shooting. I mean, that's just frustrating. Like, if you're going to put a quick turn in a game, don't make me have to spend three seconds to engage in firing in the other direction again. I mean, that just... That defeats the purpose. I mean, that makes the quick turn button essentially useless. You only got two useful functions on the controller. Using your atom bomb and firing your weapon. And maybe if you have three seconds to spare, you can engage the quick turn and dispatch your enemies. But there's no telling when they're going to show up because they randomly spawn behind you. All right. And the sound just glitched out. And now my frame rate is in the low teens. Wait, what just happened? Oh, now I'm hitting him? I mean, look at that. The hit detection is terrible in this game. Like, I was clearly... I was clearly firing my weapon towards that sprite, but the shots weren't connecting. I actually thought that the game broke or something. Alright. Cool, I got the key. You gotta find a key in every level in order to be able to open up the exit and, and essentially move on to the next level. See, now I got the jump on these guys. There we go. Okay, I take it back. I mean, the music is a mixed bag in this game. I mean, some of it is kind of cool, melodic, as long as it does not have vocals in it. Because the vocals, and maybe I am hurting someone's feelings by saying that, the vocals with the soundtrack are terrible. I mean, they're just obnoxious, and they're out of tune. I mean, I'm not a music major, but I know good singing when I hear it. And when you hear someone singing out of key, I mean, it's just, it's grating on your ears. And like I said, to be moving around a level, not knowing where the exit is, and having to go on an Easter egg hunt for the exit while that grating music is playing, like I said, it gets old, and I just died again. Great. Spawned right behind me. Thanks. I, I can't tell if I'm hitting these flying enemies because I squat when I shoot. I mean, that's 
That makes sense, right? To shoot a flying bat that's hovering above your head, squat and shoot straight. Makes all the sense in the world. I gotta fight this thing again. I like how every time you dispatch a large enemy, the sound just, I mean, it, the, the, the game temporarily breaks for a sec. Now I'm at full health, that's good at least. It's crazy, I mean, the frame rate in this game just runs the gamut from, you know, oh, doing alright, you know, 20 frames a second to like 15 frames, kind of chugging along and then, oh my god, I cannot even play this game. Like, I can't even see that enemy because look at the camera. Look at this camera. I mean, even even with the camera all the way as far back as it could possibly go, I can I can't see enemies directly in front of my character. I mean, look at this. I mean, you basically can't even see the lower half of the screen. Like, how am I supposed to fire? How am I supposed to sh look at now? I'm sticking to the wall. Actually, you know what? Let's just keep doing this. Ugh, stop. Stop sticking to the wall. I like how there's no indication of when that fire shield or firewall is going to actually start doing its thing. Oh, look, and I'm getting attacked from behind. That's fantastic. I'm just like not digging the fact that enemies randomly spawn. And maybe that's just because of the fact that I'm so used to playing first person shooters where you have to clear the levels in order to progress. So being in a situation where you have enemies that are spawning in areas where you've cl Oh, you've got to be kidding me. There's another enemy. Oh, see, yeah, these enemies are just randomly spawning behind me. I'm getting out. That's a bummer. Oh, great. Remember how I said that the movement agency in this game is not really stellar? Well, neither is the level design, as it does not cater... Look at this. I mean... Look, I've got no choice but to do this because there's no way to walk straight in this corridor because the movement agency just does not, like the movement mechanics in this game do not allow for such finesse. Like I said, you can only move in eight different directions. Let me grab this life before I get my ass handed to me. Oh gosh, I need to move back. Boy, I can't even see my own cave. This camera. Oh, hey Ed. Oh, whoa! God, that guy just took away a huge chunk of my health. right now, so that way I've got it. Yeah, I can't... See, that that's what really blows about this game. The draw... The draw distance is so... And now I just stuck to the wall. The draw distance is so deplorable in this game, I can barely... You, you can't even see who's shooting at you. You just see fire... You know, some bullets coming from the darkness. They're like, oh wow, somebody's shooting at me? I didn't know, because I can't see more than six feet in front of my face because of this fog. I mean, like I said, I haven't seen fog this bad since the original Torok. In fact, I think this might take the cake in terms of, like, very low draw distance. I think this game actually takes the cake.
This music's just so not good. It's another Ed 209. Oh, goodness gracious. I mean, I, that's the thing. Like... You might get out of a situation unscathed, but you're going to be biting your fingernails the whole time because it just, it's just all the, you know, oh, here we go, there we go. Just the movement just feels so, there's just, there's no finesse to the movement whatsoever. I mean, it's just as clumsy as it can possibly be for a third person behind the back shooter. Where's the exit? <sighs> I can't even, you know, it, you can't move backward when you're doing this. I mean, just, God, stop. Is that the exit? Oh, it is. That's another problem. I mean, just these map designs are so nonsensical. It's just hard to tell what is what in the environment. We got some more rope. Oh, geez. We got some more generic robots in the mix. It's the second time this song's been played in loop and succession. Oh, see, I can't even see the fire coming. From... And that bullet just clipped right through me. Please don't shoot me. Look, a guy just, like, literally missed me. He was shooting directly at me. This game is so bad that enemies can't even play it. Go. Look at this. I mean, a, a game like this should not require this level of trap avoiding. Oh. Goodness gracious. Respawning enemies. You know what? Screw you. Oh, God. Oh. oh, God. God, that took up a lot of my health. Like, this is ridiculous. I mean, a game with this, this low level of movement control should not require this level... Oh, goodness! I like to just sidestep right into that thing. But how was I supposed to know? I can't tell where my character is in relation to all these three-dimensional three objects in the environment. It's so unclear where you are in relation to other things. So now I'm going to just sidestep over here because I'm just afraid that if I touch this thing at all which I can't tell if I'm gonna, that I'm gonna lose, like, a chunk of my health. I don't even know if there's an area of effect damage for these fireballs. There we go. Goodness gracious, this is ridiculous. There we go. So I'm basically three levels deep into this world, and if you guys haven't noticed, 
everything looks the same. You see, have the same. You have the same background sky texture. You, oh goodness gracious! You have the same red astroturf flooring. The same just bland metal walls. I mean, none, none of these levels are varied at all. Ooh. Some extra items. What is this? Oh, that's nothing. I like how the frame rate just takes a dive when there's like th only three entities being shown on screen. Man, that thing just walked through me and just killed the shit out of me. Oh my goodness. Let's see if I can get through without getting killed. Yeah, if I die, <laughs> that's going to conclude our quick look into uh, Virtuoso for the 3DO. I can't even tell where I am in this level. And this is pretty much all there is to Virtuoso. You just walk around and just shoot stuff. I mean, there's no real finesse to the movement or the combat. It's really kind of a clunky proposition. And I'm dead. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid that's all she wrote for Virtuoso for the Panasonic 3DO, and that concludes our quick look into the title, uh, made by Mode of Time, originally for DOS, and uh, later on ported to the 3DO. And that's pretty much it. That concludes Solid State Gamer Quick Looks. I'm your host, John Rivera, as always, saying thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any uh, suggestions, comments, recommendations, uh, if you guys want to see me review or do a quick look on a particular game or perhaps want to see me do any more proto watch videos just let me know in the solid state gamer main site proper the solid state gamer dot wordpress dot com or if you want to get to touch with us directly just drop us a line at solid state romcast at gmail.com again that addresses solid state romcast at gmail.com